you know, thinking about sort of ChatGPT and its use and so on, the one of the big things about it, I think, is it's a linguistic user interface. Mm -hmm. That is, so a typical use case might be, and take the journalist case, for example. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's say I have five facts that I'm trying to turn into an article, or I'm trying to I'm trying to write a report where I have basically five facts that I'm trying to include in this report. Mm -hmm. But then I feed those five facts to ChatGPT, it puffs them out into this big report. And then and then that's a good interface for it. Uh, you know, another if I just gave if I just had in my terms those five bullet points and I gave them to some other person, the person would say, I don't know what you're talking about because these are, you know, this is your version of this sort of quick notes about these five bullet points. Mm -hmm. But if you puff it out into this thing which is kind of connects to the collective understanding of language, then somebody else can look at it and say, oh, okay, I understand what you're talking about. Now, you can also have a situation where that thing that was puffed out is fed to another large language model. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you're applying for the permit to, you know, uh, I don't know, Grow fish in some place or something like this, and it uh, you know it it um, um, and and you have these facts that you're putting in. You know I'm going to have a, a you know I'm going to you know have this kind of water and I don't know what yes. it is. Um, you just got a few bullet points. It puffs it out into this big application. You fill it out. Then at the other end, the you know the fisheries bureau has another large language model that just crushes it down because the fisheries bureau cares about these three points mm -hmm. and it knows what it cares about and it then so it's really the the natural language produced by the large language model is sort of a transport layer that you know is really LLM communicates with LLM. I mean, it's kind of like the you know I write a piece of email using my LLM yeah. and you know puff it out from the things I want to say. Your LLM turns it into, and the conclusion is X. Now the issue is, you know, that the thing is going to make this thing that is sort of semantically plausible, mm -hmm. and it might not actually be what you you know. It might not be kind of relate to the world in the way that you think it should relate to the world. Now I, I've seen this. You know, I, I've been doing. Okay, I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, I was doing this thing when we announced this this uh, plugin for 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 ChatGPT. I had this lovely example of a math word problem, some complicated thing, and it did a spectacular job of taking apart this elaborate thing about you know this person has twice as many chickens as this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and it turned it into a bunch of equations. Mm -hmm. It fed them to Wolfram Language. We solved the equations. Everybody did great. Mm -hmm. We gave back the results. And I thought, okay, I'm going to put this in this blog post I'm writing. Okay, I thought, I better just check. And turns out, it got everything, all the hard stuff it got right. At the very end, last two lines, it just completely goofed it up and mm -hmm. gave the wrong answer. And I would not have noticed this. Mm -hmm. the same thing happened to me two days ago. Okay, so I, I thought, you know, I, I made this with this ChatGPT plugin kit. Mm -hmm. I made a thing that would emit a sound would play a tune on my local computer, mm -hmm. right? So ChatGPT would produce, you know, a series of notes and it would play this tune on my computer. Very cool. Okay, so I thought I'm going to ask it play the tune that Hal sang mm -hmm. when Hal was being disconnected in 2001. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it it there it is. Daisy was it Daisy? Yes, Daisy. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, so okay. So I think you know, and so it produces a bunch of notes. And I'm like, this is spectacular. This yeah. is amazing. And then I thought, you know, I was just going to put it in. And then I thought, I better actually play this. And so I did. And it was Mary Had a Little Lamb. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. But it was Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So it was correct, but wrong. <laughs> yes. It was, uh, yes. you could easily be mistaken. Yes, right. And in fact, I, I kind of gave the, I had this quote from Hal to explain, you know, it's, it's as it, the, the Hal, you know, states in the movie, you know, it's uh, the Hal 9000 is, you know, the thing was just a, a rhetorical device because I'm realizing, oh my gosh, you know, this chat GPT, you know, could have easily fooled me. I mean, it did this, it did all the, it did this amazing thing of knowing this thing about the movie and being able to turn that into the, the notes of the song except it's the wrong song. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Hal, in, in the movie, Hal says, you know, 
I think it's something like, you know, no HAL 9, no 9000 series computer has ever been found to make an error. Mm -hmm. We are, for all practical purposes, perfect mm -hmm. and um, incapable of error. And I thought that was kind of a charming sort of uh, quote from uh, from Hal to make in connection with uh, with what ChatGPT had yeah, done in that it, case. The interesting thing is about the LLMs, like you said, that they are very willing to admit their error. Well, yes. I mean, that's a question of the RLH, uh, the reinforcement learning human feedback thing. Oh, right. That that that's you know that's nice an feature. LLM. The the really remarkable thing about ChatGPT is you know I had been following what was happening with large language models and I played with them a whole bunch and they were kind of like yeah you know kind of like what you would expect based on sort of sort of statistical continuation of language. It's, it's interesting, but it's not breakout exciting. Mm -hmm. And then I think the kind of the, the kind of reinforcement, the, the human feedback reinforcement learning, uh, you know, in, in making ChatGPT try and do the things that humans really wanted to do, that broke through, yeah. that kind of reached this threshold where the thing really is interesting to us humans. And by the way, it's interesting to see how, you know, you change the temperature or something like that, the thing goes bonkers. And it no longer is interesting to humans. It's producing garbage. Yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of right, it's somehow, it managed to get this, this above this threshold where it really is well aligned to what we humans are interested in. And uh, and, and kind of that that's, um, and, and I think, you know, nobody saw that coming, I think. Uh, certainly nobody I've talked to and nobody who was involved in in that project seems to have known it was coming. It's just one of these things that is a sort of remarkable threshold. I mean, it, you know, when we built Wolfram Alpha, for example, I didn't know it was going to work. You know, we tried to build something that would have enough knowledge of the world, that it could answer a reasonable set of questions, that we could do good enough natural language understanding that typical things you type in would work. We didn't know where that threshold was. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was not sure that it was the right decade to try and build this, even the right you know fifty years to try and build it. You know, and I think that was it's the same type of thing with ChatGPT that I don't think anybody could have predicted that you know twenty twenty two would be the year that this this became possible. I think yeah, you tell a story about Marvin Minsky and showing it to him. And saying that, like, no, 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 this time it actually works. Yes, yes, and, and I mean, uh, it's you know, it's the same thing for me. Looking at these large language models, it's like when when people were first saying the first few weeks of ChatGPT, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I've yeah. seen these large language models, um, and then uh, you know, and then I actually try it, and uh, you know, oh my gosh, it actually works. And I think uh, it's, uh, but it, but you know, the things and the thing I found, you know, I remember one of the first things I tried was uh, write a persuasive essay that a wolf is the bluest kind of animal, mm -hmm. okay? So it writes this thing and it starts talking about these uh, wolves that live on the Tibetan plateau and yeah. they're named some Latin name and so on. And I'm like, really? And I'm starting to look it up on the web and it's like, well, it's actually complete nonsense. But it's extremely plausible. I mean, it's plausible enough that I was going and looking it up on the web and wondering if there was a wolf that was blue. You know, I mentioned this on some live streams I've done, and so people have been sending me these pictures blue wolves. of <laughs> blue wolves. <laughs> Maybe it was onto something.